we have a bunch of topics we were hoping to hit on today, but sure. since you mentioned Bud, that's yeah. the latest news, and that's uh, a guy who you and the rest of the group decided to extend. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, reward him for the job well done. Um, I'm curious to hear the decision making process there, and also just your thoughts. Just being transparent and direct as always is like pro sports is tough, right? And there was a time not so long ago when we didn't know what might happen with Bud and that staff because expectations were very high and the bubble did not go as you guys had planned. You and I have have had talks about how there were, you know, so many layers to the bubble experience that that it took you guys a while to unpack what it all meant from a basketball standpoint. Then you, you fast forward to these playoffs and, you know, it was not uh, much of a secret that going in, it was, you know, there was pressure, you know what I mean? And, And so you guys get to the finish line and you're raising the trophy and and now you know you decide to to extend Bud. Take us through that a little bit, and the part that he's played, and, and the way you feel like he he kind of performed, if you will, in the playoffs. Look, I I love Bud. I do. I I think he's a great coach. He really is. Um, it's the the hard part for Bud and for all of us, and I, and I would say for the team itself, is just the expectations. Right. And I think we've got all these expectations. I mean, Bud's got it. I've got it. Everybody has it. And look, if you look at the Nets, um, they've got the expectations. They were favored to win last year. They're favored to win this year. Right. So there's always all this pressure. Um, And (laughs) I remember uh, after game two, you know, the Nets game, and I think we lose whatever, 30 or 40. um, I go in the locker room, I look at Bud, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he goes, Mark, we're just going to break down film. We're going to go back and we're going to figure it all out. I'm like, well, what do you think? <laughs> How's it looking? <laughs> and he goes, it's good. To, it, it's going to be good to get home. Um, he goes, we'll figure it out. And, he, you know, I love that about it because I'm really emotional. I'm like, sure. I'm like, I'm going in there. What do you think? Or did we, what, what did we do wrong? We just lost by 30 or 40 points. And um, Bud, is, Bud is really good. I mean, he is. And there's What do you want to hear from him pressure. in that moment, Mark? Sorry to cut you off. But like, what, what did he say and how did that reconcile with, with what you want no, to hear it, from him? He said, look, we'll figure it out because the guys just didn't play well and they'll play better. I'm, I'm like, you sure? He goes, yep. Mm, don't worry. It'll be fine. And he does have that quiet confidence, um, which is nice. Um, so I, I think you, you go through all of this. And one of the things that I saw, and I told this to Bud, I said, look, there was a huge amount of pressure on us, on him, on all of us, because everybody expects you to win. And you know, what, what he showed us, during that time is how well he handled the pressure, how well he prepared the team um, and what a great job he did. um, So that, you know, after we won, we were like, look, um, it's not, we want to reward you. We want to keep you. I mean, in, in the most difficult times, he did a great job. And what I mean by that is it ain't easy going down O2 to the nets. It's not easy. (laughs) Um, you know, sort of tying it and then going back down three, two. Yeah, we win at home, but then you got to win in Brooklyn. Um, you know, going down 0-2 to the Suns. So, I mean, you know, think of the Hawks. I mean, it's uh Giannis gets hurt and you got to get the team ready and you got to come up with a plan. I mean, I think Bud did a great, great job and sort of showed us um look here with pressure on, not only can I handle it, but I can figure shit out. And, um, you know, that's the reason why we wanted to extend them um, just because of the job he did. It is an exclusive group of NBA coaches who have NBA championships. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. I mean, especially because there's so many coaches who have a bunch and it is really a kind of a limited group. Uh, I kind of want to ask you about somewhat of the other news uh, of the, the last few weeks. I, be, I guess there's been several, but Giannis is now a part owner of the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What what do you I guess just generally think about that? I'm sure you weren't like super active in those talks, but just uh, it's kind of cool. I I think it's great. And look, part of it is um, this has been a while in the making. 
Um, I had talked to Mark Atanasio about it a while ago and said, look, I think Giannis would be really interested in investing. Um, I think it'd be great for the city. I think it's great for everybody. You know, Aaron Rodgers invested with us on the team. You know, and part of that is you, you sort of want your best players to become ingrained in the city and sort of investing in another team um, is great because he's not allowed to invest in the Bucs, right? He's not allowed to invest in a basketball team. Um, so I thought it was a great idea. Um, and it, it sort of, look, at the time, it gives you this confidence that, okay, great, Giannis wants to stay, right? He wants, you're not thinking of investing in the Brewers, um, you know, because this was probably a year ago where all these discussions started. So you start feeling good about, you know, the fact that your best player and your most important player um, wants to have roots, not only emotionally, but also financially within the city. He, Perfect so segue he, there. Go ahead, Slayer. I, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask. I mean, like, obviously he was like this mega star in Milwaukee um, and even globally somewhat. But have you seen, I mean, even in the in the weeks leading up to the title, winning the title, the weeks after the title, like his fame even locally and, and certainly globally just explode even more? Yeah, I know it has. But I think part of that, it's just, I, I think for Giannis, playing as well as he did, and sort of that, you know, the sixth game was an iconic game. I mean, scoring 50 points, 17 and 19 free throws. Um, and he wouldn't, you know, after the game, um, he wouldn't let go of the, of the trophies. I mean, after you guys saw it. He's walking around with them. And I went to him. I'm like, hey, I need the trophy. I want to take a couple of pictures. He's like, no. Nope. <laughs> has he given it up he yet? Had, have you he seen had a the trophy he had a quandary though mark because he had cigar I champagne know, yeah, yeah. and trophy that's three yeah. i'm not good at math but there were two arms and two, arms. two hands care, man. so that tough. was the only and the best part one of my favorite post game six moments that i actually captured on video was bud was finishing his press conference and here comes big fella in the back of the room Giannis walks in and he's got the champagne, he's got the stogie, got the trophy. The other time that he put down the trophy was to sit in the back of the room and practice his free throw stroke and just kill time while waiting for Bud to finish, which was his little way, I think, of of telling the media that, yeah, look at me, I made some free throws. Yeah. Uh, y'all said I couldn't. No, it's exactly that. I think it was great for him. He took the trophy um, to Athens. Um, he's having a great time. You know what? He's 26 years old. He should. Like, Enjoy life. Like you're, you're the guy. Um, we're actually all going back to Athens, um, you know, in, in a couple of weeks, um, you know, just again with Giannis to spend some time with them. It should be fun. I mean, it's, I think it's been great for him. It's been great for the team. Um, look, and look what happened. I mean, Chris and Drew um, right after, right afterwards, get an Olympic medal. I mean, it's, it's been a dream season um, for all our players. It really has. So I was going to say a perfect segue. We talked, but as far as Giannis goes, Mark, um, and I just looked it up here real quickly to remind myself of the timing. It's been less than nine months since he signed the Supermax. And yeah. last off season, you know, I remember being in the bubble and doing some pretty deep reporting on where his head was at, what was going to yeah. happen here. And we all know that he he looked at it long and hard and you know, like any superstar, had a lot of people in his ear trying to figure out what he wanted to do. You know, take us into that time a little bit. And where was your level of concern? Because this is a generational player. This is an all-time great. Yeah. And we all know the history of, you know, small market lack of success in this area. A lot of times those guys don't stick around. So, you know, how, you know, how much angst was there at that time for you? And, and take us through that a little bit. Look, there's always angst. I mean, there just is. It's, the, the reason there is, is, um, you know, shit happens and people can change their mind. I think there was, there was a high level of confidence, but part of that is just the person who Giannis is. I think the relationship that we all had with him um, and the belief that he really, you know, he, he wanted to stay. Um I think ultimately at the end of the day, it wasn't really about the money for him. Um, I think it really was, um, could he win? I mean, Giannis is very, very focused on winning. 
And, you know, we spent a lot of time with him um, going through about, look, we're going to do everything it takes to try to win. It's going to be hard. Um, but we think we have the players um, and we're going to get other players. And I think there was a level of confidence that Giannis had with John. I mean, there was a great relationship. And, you know, one of the things we just kept on talking to Giannis about is, look, you have a great relationship with the GM. You have a great relationship with the ownership group. So, yeah, you know, you can always go somewhere else, but you know us, you know how committed we are. So there's a big trust factor. Um, so we felt good, but you know, you you get nervous. I mean, when was it? December first, right? That's when you could start, right? right? Right. And so it's not signed on December first, and everybody starts writing, "Oh, that means he's changing his mind." And every day that it goes by, um, you know, you were really confident, and you just get a little bit more nervous. Uh, so that was, I mean, that was the outside commentary. Yeah. What? What, what, how did that hit you? And, and what meaning, if any, did you attach to the fact that he didn't sign it on December well, 1? Not much. I mean, we were always talking. I mean, it's, um, we thought everything was going well. Um, you know, he wanted to get back. I mean, it was the whole thing with right. um, COVID. We needed to start getting the players. And, you know, our view was that he would, um, but that he needed to be back here. We needed to spend more time. We needed to talk. And we spent about a week just going through all the different things we wanted to try to do and our commitment to winning. So I think for Giannis, as he saw that, um, I think he got more and more comfortable. Um, so yeah, it all, it all worked out, but were we nervous? Yeah. You're always nervous. I remember, you know, you guys had met in Chicago, I think with his agent, Alex yeah. Ratzis, and I forget who all was part of that group, but that was an important meeting. And then you met, at his house. And, and I know a little time has passed, but I wonder, as you look back on it, what types of granular questions came your way, either from Giannis or Alex, that, that, that you thought ultimately played a part in the way they saw the situation? I think it was always, um, here are the players, here's the people who we really like, you know, the, who Giannis thought were really good, um, who he thought would be helpful. And, you know, we spent a lot of time going through that of, look, you're right, but I don't think we can get that guy. You're right, but here's what's hard. I mean, it's um, – so we just spent a bunch of time with Alex and with Giannis talking about all those things. Um, and they were all super positive conversations. I mean, it was just, here's – look, we agree with you. We're going to try to do what we can. And I, and I think that was really the message. The message was, look, we're willing to spend the time and the money. Um, and – I think as we spent the time with him, he, I think Giannis felt, yeah, we were going to do everything we could to try to win a championship, um, which is what he was really focused on. And so were we. So obviously, I mean, it's, we want to win a championship. He wants to win a championship. Right. I, I feel like that leads pretty well into like a Drew Holiday question. Cause I mean, you're mentioning like talking to him about players you think might help. I mean, Drew Holiday turns out to be really kind of the home run move of the off season, you know, NBA wide. I mean, it, clinched the title essentially um what do you as we're doing kind of uh you know reduxes of some of this stuff what do you remember about the holiday conversations internally uh and then eventually finally pulling the trigger on it and, and obviously what it led to um you know john horse was a huge fan of drew he just was um and when we started talking about that um you know, I knew, I knew who he was. I thought he was a really good player. And I, I, I knew he was a great defensive player. Um, I just didn't know the person he was. And John felt really strongly um, that we should go all in with Drew and felt, look, if he's on our team, he's the missing piece. And, um, you know, we signed off on that, obviously. And, you know, what you found is that Drew is – like as an individual, it's just off the charts. I mean, just like smart, thoughtful, like, like you know, his parents did a phenomenal job. I mean, you, you would be proud to call him your son. You know, same thing with Giannis, same thing with Chris. When you look at some of our players, um, they're just great guys. And Drew, um, you know, John Horse really felt he was going to be the missing piece. And he was dead right. And, you know, I remember, um, you know, the first practice, 
uh, Drew was covering Giannis. And that was, you know, same thing. Giannis knew Drew by reputation. After practice that day, um, you know, John says to me, he goes, yeah, Giannis now knows how good he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's covering him. He's good. Right. And it, it was actually great. It, it was. And I think it, I, I think 100% it was a huge factor in Giannis resigning um, because, you know, he's he saw what we were willing to do. Um, and, you know, I think, look, and I think the next trade, you know, that John had done on P.J. Tucker was actually also a great trade, you know, at the trade deadline. So John Horst did a great job in sort of putting the pieces together. Um, so it's it's been good.